Hi, I'd like to show you some of the plate work and contour cutting features available in Advanced Steel. And I think you're going to find these quite impressive. To save a bit of time, I've already got some construction created in my file. And to start off with, I'd like to create a hopper between this square shape at the top and this oval shape at the bottom of the funnel. And it's going to have mounting flanges connected to these two channels. So the first thing I'll do is to create the simple mounting flanges. I just ask for a plate on the middle of that edge and tell it the correct position. Size is okay. I'll ask for another plate in the middle of the other edge. Again, happy with the size, just get the position right and I'm happy with those. Now, I want those plates bolted to the channels. So I simply ask for a set of bolts between that plate and that channel and position those like so. And in the dialog box I can choose any type of bolt I like. So let's go for countersunk screws and I only want one row of five bolts and I think I need them 200 spacing. That looks good. And you can see there that it's gone through the channel created the correct grip length no problem at all I'll do the same for the other flange and it remembers the last settings I used so I don't have to repeat them now for the clever bit to create the actual funnel shape we have a special tool called great conical folded plate and I simply tell it I want to go between this shape which is just a closed polyline and this shape, which is another closed polyline. They don't have to be square, don't have to be round, don't have to be anything specific in shape, as long as they're both closed polylines. I can tell it how many facets I want on each corner and how thick I want the plate. And there you go. In an instant, I have the folded plate. Now, I do need to make sure these flanges are part of the plate. That at the moment, they're still separate. So I simply zoom in and I can ask it to create a fold between that plate and that plate. And it's created the fold there to join them together. Same on the other side. I need a fold between that plate and that plate. And that's done for me. Now, that's really easy to do. and. Already you might be able to see that you can get carried away creating folded bits everywhere you go. So you need to make sure that the shape you've created is viable and can be created out of a flat pattern. So there's several ways of doing that in here, but the nice one is to go into the part and simply ask it to show you the unfolded version. And there you go, there's the unfolded development of that plate, complete with the countersunk holes where the flange goes, everything you need. And yes, that's a plausible shape to get out of a flat pattern, so I'm happy with that just change back to the standard presentation and we can move on. I'll show you the drawing later and the drawing will show the flat pattern as well. Now we're not limited to closed polyline shapes. We can actually do curved or folded or twisted plate between any two edges you like. So I have here a really drastic example where I've got two curves going opposite directions and I simply ask for a twisted plate between that line and that edge and go for it and there you go I have my nice little bow tie shape twisted plate. Obviously that's a bit extreme, but if you have something like perhaps uh, a decorative wall, curved wall, and you want to do some nice fascia, or a bridge deck where you might have the camber of the bridge going across the street to great strength and a camber going sideways for rain runoff, then the edges don't go in straight lines or parallel. But as long as you can draw two edges, you can make a twisted plate between them very simply as shown. Now we can go further than that because what we can also do is make cuts in these plates. So I'm simply going to tweak one of my settings and ask it to cut through that plate this G shape that I've drawn before. And there you go. There's my shape cut in the plate following all the contours. And again, as before, I can ask for the flat pattern. You can see the distorted G there, how it would be cut in the flat pattern, so that when folded, it's the right shape. 
so that's all really good and really easy now with so much plate work you could do things like bracketry and you may occasionally get a situation where you've got a bit of a clash like this tube going through this bracket that's no problem it's very easy to cut that simply ask it to cut that plate around that tube and it's done that and if I have a look you can see it's got the perfect circular cut around the tube but you may notice that the edges of that cut are in line with the tube and not flat to the plate so that while perfect could be expensive and difficult to cut that's no problem though we simply come in here and you tick the option for a straight cut and now if you have a look you can see that the edges have been made perpendicular to the surface of the plate and it knows exactly which way to grow so that the minimum opening still follows the perfect circle of the tube with whatever clearance you want to add in this box so that's extremely easy trouble is getting a flat pattern of that might be quite hard quite tricky geometry to project all that but as of course with all our plates we simply keep on asking it to show us the unfolded shape and there's a nice egg shaped hole for the flat pattern which when folded up as described gives you that perfect circular cavity it's equally easy to do the same job should two beams clash so we've got one tube clashing with another tube here just going straight through each other but we can cut them perfectly around each other simply using this tool we say I want to cut that tube around this tube and I want to cut this tube around that tube and then if I isolate those in turn you can see that this first tube has the perfect notch in the side where the angle tube came in the side of it or if you look at this piece we have the perfect scallop on the end where it meets the other tube so these complex shapes extremely easy to cut and create now you need to describe them on a drawing or on NC files so that's no problem we simply go ahead and create our drawings so let's number it first so it's going to do the drawings what I'll do with this tube, I'll specifically ask it to give me a wraparound template style. And then I'll just let it go ahead and draw everything else as it sees fit. and we have our set of drawings so if I have a look at the results we have our document manager to manage the drawings that were created here we have a preview of the wraparound template so at the top we have the tube itself the detail showing the length and the diameter and so on and marking an attachment point for the template the template has to be drawn at one to one or it wouldn't be any good so the drawing border is a bit irrelevant at this point but there's your perfect template at one to one scale to wrap around the real tube to get the perfect cutting line for the other parts there's the brackets and the channels there's the other tube this is the hopper the flat pattern here you can see of the hopper with all the holes marked and you could add extra dimensions to that if you wanted to dimension where the fold lines go but we can see here that in red we have all the fold lines with the angles marked on them ready to work and there's the folded up hopper same goes for the other parts the bow tie with the hole cut in it and the simple bracket with its hole cut in it now that doesn't have too many dimensions on you could try and go ahead and dimension that shape but it's not really proper arcs or curves it could be awkward shapes so dimensioning it could be tricky to make it nice and simple but in this modern day and age we don't really need to worry too much because we tend to use things like NC files which I can create in one click or DXF files which I'll create in one click and if you look at the NC files these can be fed to the uh, NC machining tools and that describes the contour and all the coordinates of the hole the outside shape the part numbers and so on for the plates and the folds all accurately described or the NC files which go into a plate profiling machine there's your NC file with the fold lines etched on it and the perfect cutouts so that's one to one any profiling tool can follow that shape perfectly without the dimensions being required 
and the same for the other ones. And again, you've got the fold lines up or down, green or yellow, to make the perfect shape. So it's all extremely easy to create. Just takes a few clicks for each thing. Very powerful plate work. Thank you.